Welcome. So this is the May, I know it's hard to keep track of days. This is the May Pop YS. Um, I would love it if you said hello in the chat. Um, and ta-da, it's not traditionally starting with one of my slides, but for those of you that don't know me, I'm Angie Manfredi. I'm the Youth Services Consultant for the State Library of Iowa. And this is Pop YS. It's our monthly um, professional development webinar for all topics relating to youth services. And every month we have a different subject and we talk about collection development and programs and it's been amazing. We took April off because we had kids first, but we're glad to be back in the swing of things with this May session. And this is a special session. You're not going to hear from me the entire time. Um, we are going to have a special presentation. Um, so this is my friend, Thomas Malak. Wave hello, Thomas. Hey. He's, he's a YA librarian in uh, Richland, South Carolina. Um, and I've known him for I don't even know how many years. Um, so many. 2011. So it's <laughs> 2011. been nine years now. So nine years. Um, and literally any time I want to know anything about comics, and especially manga, I asked Thomas. He's helped me with a variety of projects I've been involved with. Um, one of the things he helped me with was when I was working with the Ferguson Library to develop their collection. Um, he created the, he co-created the list of all the comic books we purchased for the Fer Ferguson Library. Um, he explains manga to me endlessly in patient detail, and so I knew that he was the perfect person to do this webinar. Um, we're going to really talk today about the basics of what manga means in your collection and how you can use it. And depending on how this goes and the feedback we get from everyone, um, we're, we thought about doing another one where we could talk more about using this as programming and also anime at your library. But we're going to start with this one, and I'm going to stop talking right now and let um, Thomas take it from here. Sam is not with us today, but Scott is. Scott is the um, is our tech support today during the there, Scott. Scott's our tech support today during the panel, so if you have any questions, you can message him directly. Everybody else, I would love it if you would use the chat. I'm going to be active in chat. I'll be mon monitoring and chatting in there. Um, make sure that if you use the chat, you select all panelists, um, to all panelists and attendees, so we can see everything you're saying, um, both the panelists and everyone else in the room. Um, and I think that's it, Scott, unless there's any other housekeeping details, um, we'll get started. I think we're good. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, turn off my camera, and Thomas, you have the floor. And you, Thomas, you can let Scott or I know if you have questions, and we'll try to answer them. Okay, and y'all will keep me honest on timekeeping and like, oh, you got. Um, we're almost I'm at gonna, an hour, Thomas. I'm gonna let Scott do that because he's way okay. better at that than me. <laughs> okay. So we're we have an hour. Is that what you're telling me? We have an hour. Okay, I'll keep an eye on it. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Here we go. The roller coaster is about to dip. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I can just share screen and we will jump into this presentation. And I'll reduce this down into one little window. Okay, hello everyone. I am here for Youth Services Pop for the Manga 101 session. You can see here a number of manga characters uh, celebrating the Children's Day from Golden Week. It's this week-long holiday in Japan. Uh, everyone, a lot of people get time off and go on vacation and do things. And I think that just recently passed in Japan, so I thought that'd be a good way to open up the visuals for this presentation. Let's get some introductions out of the way. My name is Thomas Malik. Uh, I started in libraries as a shelver in 2009, uh, which I did for about a year at a branch location. I then became a graduate assistant for about uh, one semester. And then once I graduated, I was a substitute within the Richland Library System for several months. And I was lucky enough to get a teen services librarian position at a branch location in late 2010. And then in 2013, I moved to our main location where I work in our teen center which is a space just for our 12 to 18 year olds. Uh, I'm putting my contact information up front that you drop me a line, drop me an email with any questions, any observations. I don't mind, as Angie just said in her intro, I love helping people find the right books because you're librarians and you love helping other people find books. So anything I can do to ripple effect <laughs> book recommendations, I love doing. I also co-host a podcast with another librarian, Kristen Lalonde, about comics and libraries called Secret Stacks. 
uh, feel free to look up the show or visit the website. And if you want to ask anything on there, that's also a great venue. So I've got a chart here about some of our collections on Richland Library shelves. I was able to do a graphic novel training for our library staff just at the beginning of 2020. And what great timing. Those stats are still relevant right now. So we see that our general graphic novel collection has 22,900 or so graphic novels. Those are just individual graphic novels, not series. Our children's graphic novel collection, also quite healthy at 9,300 uh, titles. And then our manga collection, 6,925. So a nice big chunk of the pie there. And then if we compare all of that, all 39,000 and some change as of January, uh, our adult fiction books, we have roughly 60,000, at least when I look through the catalog. I'm sure there's plenty of stuff still uh, stuck in boxes or in some sort of reserve status. But I just want to give you a picture of the size of things uh, where the Richland Library system is concerned. Uh, and so I'd also like to get to know you. Uh, who already has manga in their library's collection? And uh, for some of these responses, I can see a raised hand from Amy here. Uh, if Angie and Scott, if you all see uh, any distinct responses, we can jump through some of that. You guys, you guys can answer in the chat um, too. Um, so. so some yeah, of you already have ahead. manga in your collection. And I also want to take a look at who has a graphic novel section, because I know a lot of libraries, sometimes comics are the exception to the rule. Like it just sort of gets put away in fiction or you throw it in the seven, was it the 791.5s? And so it may or may not have its own section. And I can tell you from a decade's experience when, even back when I was just a shelver and we had graphic novels, and then when I started as a teen services librarian, just from the number of people who requested, hey, where's your manga? Hey, where's the superhero? We had a graphic novel section, but I was like, we could just, since manga is its own size in many ways, and it's, it's such a distinct thing from Western comics publishing, if we just put them aside in their own area, people looking for manga will find them, like they'll recognize it as soon as they see it. Those stats just flew through the roof as that happened. Uh, so if you don't have a graphic novel section, I highly encourage, you know, put it all in one spot <laughs> so people know what they're looking for. And then who's brand new to manga? Who am I? I may be preaching to the choir here. I may be uh, converting some new believers. I don't know. So there may, there, there may be a few responses here, some people brand new to this. So good, I'll, I'll, try, I'll try a balanced approach here. So what is manga? If everyone knew what manga was, this would be the shortest part. Manga is Japanese comics. That is the long and short of it. Are they comics from Japan? Did someone in Japan make them? They're Japanese comics. Some people, they draw a blurrier line. There are people who do manga inspired styles, or maybe they experiment some and that and people can argue about that sort of thing. But in general, 99.9% .9 of the manga you find is someone in Japan made comics, it's manga. This is a picture here of Osamu Tezuka. He is an enormous influence within the manga world. Uh, he passed away at the end of the 80s. He's known as the god of manga. He's sitting on a pile that it only represents a fraction of his total output. And he has all these statements here about all the different things that manga is. And that's because he was at the heart of so many different genres, always trying to reinvent himself, always trying to keep capture new audiences, uh, that his effect is still felt to this day. Uh, I took this photo here at the Kyoto International Manga Museum you see a giant yellow bird there uh, up on the second floor watching over these families at the manga museum in Kyoto. All of these families and children, they're allowed to take books off the shelves in the museum out of this public reading uh, uh, rack. And they can just read together outdoors and just build that, just build the bond. Uh, and the phoenix up here, this large yellow bird, 
Uh, it's from one of Tezuka's crowning achievements, the Phoenix series, which is currently out of print. So I hope they bring it back someday. But I, I just could not get over the poetry of that, that someone who was so integral to the formation of comics as Japan knows them, uh, has this figurehead that's watching over families and children who are now getting into comics themselves. And you have this statement from Tezuka's obituary about, you know, why do, they, why do the Japanese love manga so much? Foreigners find it very strange to see adults engrossed in weekly comic magazines. That's a huge answer right there. They have weekly comic magazines for all different age groups and types of readers. One explanation is that they did not have Osamu Tezuka. However, something you don't see in this statement here is manga is generational. So I can get on uh, the historical soapbox and tell you about Tezuka, but what about the year 24 group, which you had a group of women, including Moto Hagio, Keiko Takamiya, and Ryoko Ikeda, doing comics such as The Heart of Thomas, Tutera, and Rose of Versailles, uh, and they all came of age around the same age of 24, and they said, well, we want to make the kind of comics we want to read, and we want to push shoujo and jose-type comics into new boundaries. We want to push sci-fi. We want to push historical. We want to push, you know, German boys boarding school drama, which is a real thing. And they did things that Tezuka couldn't have dreamed of, and they did it way better than him. When they came to prominence, this group of women, their reader polls kicked all the boys' comics butts. All right? So men read comics, women read comics, boys and girls read comics. Uh, everybody wins. Manga is also economical. If I'm getting into comics and I say, well, I watched those Marvel movies and I think Captain America is pretty cool. I'm going to go read an issue off the stands. Uh, it's going to be $4 for a 20-ish page experience. It's about 20 cents a page. That's pretty expensive. Okay, well, I'll wait for the, the trade paperback to come out, put several issues together. Okay, well, that's going to be almost $20 for 152 pages, so usually five or six issues put together, about 12 cents a page. I'm saving a little bit, but that's still quite a bit of money just for that one arc. Okay, I turn over to manga, $10, 200 pages, it's five cents a page. And who buys stuff at retail price anyway? I'm gonna wait, go to Books a Million or Barnes and Noble, wait for a buy two, get one free deal, uh, get it on my Kindle or my Kobo or my Nook or whatever, uh, wait for a digital sale. It's just easier and cheaper to read manga. And then here's the dirty secret I didn't make a slide out of, is that piracy is rampant. And so a lot of manga series, when you go to look them up, it's almost innocuous how it happens. You just Google a series because you say, I want to see who the author of this is. And then your top five results all say, oh, you're looking for Dragon Ball Super? Were you looking for the uh, completely clean, high quality PDF so you can read the whole thing for free right now? And it's like, I, I wasn't, but... This seems like a fairly effortless process. And so people are receptive to that. Dragon Ball Super is popular. Oh, I can just search and read the whole thing for free. I'm not saying that's right. I don't recommend it, but that's a thing that happens. And it also happens with uh, all of comics, but uh, that's part of the dark side of manga is how much of it gets pirated. So this leads to the question, what are comics to you? Uh, I bring up this generational aspect of comics, but Honestly, in America, it seems that a lot of people, you know, I'm 33, all right? So as part of the being in the middle of the millennial experience here, comics were, you know, those little Archie digests at the grocery store. And you, know, you ask your parents, like, oh, can you spend a buck 75 and get me this? I want to know what Jughead's up to this week. Or it's the paper comes in and there's a bunch of funny comics and they're fairly simple to follow, you know? Uh, I think anyone here could identify this uh, anonymous orange cat who enjoys coffee and lasagna and doesn't terribly enjoy Mondays uh, by Jim Davis. But we can understand as we read panel to panel, it's only three panels. It reads left to right. There's two word balloons. I believe the biggest word is only two syllables, but we understand movement lines, we understand gestures, we understand Garfield's facial expressions, we understand that he ran past a coffee cup and came back to it and then stopped moving and that he's happy now to have gotten the coffee and that the coffee is hot because a little curly line comes out the top of it. 
And that informs a lot of people's comics experiences. Like, oh, okay, you can read about funny cats. You can read uh, all those different uh, syndicated things out of the newspaper. And then manga comes along and just flips the, the entire truck over. Which is why I want to ask, and I think we should always ask ourselves this with our collections, what are comics to them? This is a photo from the Richland Library Teen Center. Uh, a couple of friends came in, both teens. I protected their identity with a smiley face, but they came in, they learned that we had a manga collection, scoured through it, and they checked out as much as they could, as many different series, and the conversations around it were so transactional, so life-affirming. Uh, I think everyone's hearts would have grown three sizes that day because you hear these friends saying, well, I can binge through this series over the weekend, and when I finish this series, you gotta read that series so that you can trade it to me, and then uh, when your family goes to the library, you can check those books in, and then we'll get the other half of that series. And so the excitement and the, there was no gate, there was no barrier. It was a thing that they could freely just trade and swim in. And maybe the parents could come along and say, well, you gotta throw you know, a nonfiction book on there. You have to throw a teen prose novel on there. They might do that. But as librarians, I just wanna throw the gates open and say, whatever looks good, grab as much of it as you want. If it doesn't work for you, just turn it back in, no harm, no foul. If you loved it, I can show you infinitely more series that will push all the same buttons. Uh, and that's just a really great feeling to imbue into young people because then they grow up and they become old people and then they support your library and they tell everyone how great the library was to them. And that's kind of my soapbox moment there is that we don't know the effect of this positive reading, except when you have positive reading experiences and all the children's librarians out there already know this, that when you encourage a parent to sit and read to their child and the child creates a positive association across their neurons and their brain say, well, when I'm reading, I feel like I'm in a loving experience and I'm learning new words and I'm finding out things about the world and finding things out about myself because of the way I react to those things. And I'm able to use the things from the books and make sense of the world and everything gets better when I read a book. And you see all these reactions here from a, a brand new series called Time Paradox Ghostwriter, where this author is doubting himself. Should he continue with this series that he's kind of plagiarizing? But his editors show him all the fan mail and you just see some people are reading with their friends, some people are reading by themselves, some people are proud just to have like a little bookshelf of the series. And this is my series, this is what I'm reading, I'm having a great time with it. And other people are just having fun, you know, just passing time on the train, just having that little in-between experience. Manga provides that for a lot of people. So manga is comics, manga is the comics experience that you had growing up, and manga is a comics experience for a whole other generation that's growing up with it, enjoying it in their own way. And we're gonna talk a lot about what they're enjoying in their own way. I also wanna add, manga has changed the world. There's a more adult oriented series called The Drops of God. And there's a link here to a Wine Spectator article about how different importers and exporters, they read this series religiously because when a wine is endorsed in this, and the creators, they always sample the wines that they talk about in this manga. It's a great work if you can find it, right? But uh, sales rise and fall based on the reviews from this manga. It's completely fiction, but they use real brands. And then over on the right, we have an article from Sports Illustrated about the Slam Dunk series. And they were debunking this myth that, oh, when Yao Ming entered the NBA, you know, that's when Japan got interested. It's like, no. When Slam Dunk the manga landed, it put this love of sport and competition and basketball and technique that just caused a whole generation to say, yeah, I want to try basketball. That sounds like fun. And uh, the people who lead Japan's National Basketball Association, they thanked Slam Dunk officially. They said there's this whole generation that grew up and love basketball now. So this stuff doesn't happen in a vacuum. There's no, this is not some, uh, Oh, it's just the cotton candy reading that just goes in your eyes and then falls out later and has no effect. Manga has an effect. The things you read matter. So when you're reading comics, this is the big thing that people need to get used to, is that a lot of, almost all manga nowadays gets, is right to left. 
in Japan, uh, everything, everything that they read and write, it's right to left. There was a time you had some left to right manga. They would, they would have to flip the pages around for Western audiences, but it's a lot cheaper <laughs> if you just keep the original files and just uh, translate the Japanese, send it over to America. So this is from the, the days of Tokyo Pop, where you would open a manga and you would hit this page immediately and go, oh, I have to go to the, the other side of the book. I see. And here's a demonstration from mangaforkids.com with the numbered uh, word balloons. And you can, if, as you follow the numbers, you may notice it runs uh, sort of in a zigzag line. You go, you know, one, two, three, four, go back to the right, five, six, seven, go down into the right again, eight, nine. And then you start at the top right on the next page and you sort of, you draw, your eye draws a Z across the page as you keep moving. Now there are some manga like Ichif here where it actually came over left to right style. And that translates pretty well, uh, especially using context clues. I don't think anyone would accidentally read it right to left. But you see the level of detail here. And this is from uh, doing cleanup work at the Fukushima power plant. This was a guy who was there and he said, I wanna make the manga about all the stuff I went through. Here's the equipment I used. Here's what the other guys thought while we were working. But we can also look at right to left. We can test out our, what we just saw here, where on the right page, single panel, easy to read. And then she notices this cat looking at her and they have a little conversation. We move to the page on the left, cat talks to her. This only works in the context of right to left. If you were reading it left to right, you would get an entirely different story. But it would still be someone trying on clothes and talking to her cat one way or the other. And this is, and then we get to a page like this, where it's sort of a hall of mirrors. Phoenix was originally printed right to left in Japan. It comes over to the States, they print it left to right, uh, for American audiences. This came from a digitization of that where they took the left to right pages, but then arranged them for the ebook in right to left order. So I get to page 156 here and I'm thinking, okay, this was flipped for left to right. So I'm gonna start at this what, who spoke, who spoke to me just now. And then maybe this little thought balloon saying, I did Leon, I spoke to your mind. And so where do I go now? Do I go to one of these bubbles in the middle? Do I go around the frame to the other when you shot me bubble? Do I go in a spiral? Do I bounce back and forth? And then what happens when I get to the next page? That can be a little overwhelming. And I'm here to tell you in manga, in any sort of comics, that's perfectly natural. Sometimes you read a comic and you have to just get halfway through the page and go, hold on, I didn't, I didn't read that right. I got to start over. <laughs> hold on a moment. And sometimes that's because you're navigating the layout, you're still learning how to get across the page. Sometimes an artist can be confusing. It's not unheard of. Have you ever read a novel that was confusing? You know, not everything is uh, as clear as we might like. And some of that speaks to comics as a literacy ESL tool. So I'm sure you're familiar with comics uh, having an advantage in having the visual context clues, uh, having all text and thoughts you know, separated into you know, speech bubbles and thought bubbles, uh, exposition to accommodate images of action. So we get a pretty clear explanation of why people are doing what's happening on the page. But we also get very clear examples of sequencing, onomatopoeia, uh, bold facing, especially to create emphasis so that that inner voice, your inner monologue that's hearing all the characters speak, you're thinking to yourself like, oh, I know exactly how they said it because I can see which words are popping out or which words have like spiky fonts around them. And there's also regression, which is big in literacy. So that's the ability as you're reading to call back on what you just read, whether it was a few pages ago or a few chapters ago. And again, it happens with prose. It also happens with comics. You might see a reaction to something. You might see an object in a character's hand. And you might say, when did they, pick that up. Let me go back a few pages. Okay, they got it then, they have it now, and now they're using it in this scene. Uh, and so being, being able to just track events across pages of text, it's a big literacy ability. Let's do some vocabulary. Am I, everyone good so far? Am I going too fast, too slow? 
I think it's going great. Everybody Excellent. is learning a lot. <laughs> Good. This is going to go on YouTube. So if you, if you want to rewind later. Okay. Yeah, it will be recorded so you can watch again. Okay. So manga, as we just said, comics from Japan, often printed in black and white and read right to left. Why are they in black and white? Because that is cheap and cost effective. They're often printed on pulp paper. It's easy to just throw out tons of uh, those magazine format things. And then as those chapters come out, you take the individual chapters of a series, put them together, say, here's volume one of it, here's volume two, you know, chapters one through 10, 11 through 20, so on and so forth. Um, th there's a myth I should debunk now. I've gotten this question from teens. I imagine you're gonna get it if you, if in your manga collections, they'll say, how come so many manga characters are white. Why is this guy white? Why is she white? And it really just comes down to how they publish these. They're, they're using black and white. They're just, don't put a lot of skin tone on it. That's a default appearance. You'll Sometimes you read a manga and they're very detail oriented and everyone has a certain amount of tone uh, and people with dark skin exist in a manga. Or you'll see a character who seems to have porcelain white skin and it's actually a reflection of their condition in the story and not just the default. Uh, but generally a lot of manga take place in Japan. Everyone in those stories is Japanese unless stated otherwise. Uh, so that's just something good to know because you're going to get that question from young people especially. So when we talk about genres in manga uh, there's four large categories. Uh, we can start with shonen often targeted toward young boys, action and adventure. There's a hot series right now called My Hero Academia, uh, basically superhero high school. Everyone's making friends, making rivals. There are boy and girl classmates. Uh, everyone's got a certain superpower. They're all like learning their powers, who can defeat whom, let's have a tournament. And you know, the teachers all have powers and you know, they're so impressive. And you know, who's, who is whom's role model, who's being taught. You know, we're going to settle this rivalry and there's a big lineup of everyone. They're getting ready for a big old fight. Plenty of girls read Shonen. So whenever people say, oh, Shonen means boys comics. You're all a bunch of librarians. You already know there's no such thing as boy books and girl books. All right. Plenty of, and as we're going to see when I get to Shoujo, plenty of boys read the girl comics. Plenty of girls read the boy comics. It all comes down to what's entertaining. What does the individual reader get out of it? Uh, so with Shoujo, generally aimed at young girls, uh, often emphasizes relationships and emotions. And if we were to make the comparison, and I think this would be a pretty accurate one for comparing a lot of series, we notice in the shonen, a lot of these individual outfits, characters with a lot of these individual like superpowers, and they're all gonna prove themselves against each other and against whatever big bad villain shows up. And they're all gonna try to be the best and be the best friends and be able to lean on each other. Shoujo, we know if they're in school uniforms, but they're not completely indistinct from one another. We have the different hairstyles, we have the different groupings of friends here, and in this series, Orange, it's very important how characters react to each other emotionally, how they understand each other. You'll get a lot of thought bubble exposition where maybe these characters are laughing at a joke on the left side of the image, but a character on the right who's laughing, maybe they have an exposition thought where they're like, well, I'll laugh to maintain this friendship moment. But, you know, I can't believe, you know, that boy laughed at her joke. You know, what if there's something going on between them? And you get into a lot of, honestly, what drives a lot of popularity in teen fiction, in my opinion, just that you get into a lot of characters' heads, you figure out why they're navigating uh, their social world the way they are, and then you get to watch these different ideas collide, and it's exciting. Seinen is the term used for manga for older readers, which a lot of people see as, not wrongly, but they see as meaning, oh, so this is like shonen, but they can have a lot more blood. Or instead of just, oh, in a shonen, there's a cute girl or a cute woman. In a seinen, now it can be like, uh, naked woman or they can be much more sexual and sometimes that's true but as in the example here from yotsubato you have this near wordless sequence starting on the right you have a father uh, going to his only child she went off to walk 
got caught in a huge rainstorm. Uh, the father looks out the window and he's like, oh my gosh, my, you know, my daughter's out there in the rain. I got to go find her. And he shows up with the umbrella. And instead of thinking, oh, poor you, or, you know, I need to shelter you from this rain. He closes the umbrella and it's just like, ah, like, let's just embrace this. Let's just have fun with this moment. And it turns into like a little joke at, with the neighbor being like, what, what are you two doing? Just standing in front of my house, yelling at the rain. But what's happening in Yotsubado, and you'll see me recommend this later as a kid-friendly title, because it is, it's actually a seinen series, because there are adults who just want to see a gentle, emotionally rewarding catharsis from watching a single parent teaching his child. And Yotsubado, she's a whole ball of energy unto herself. So just this whole business of raising a child and what are some of the fun moments? What are some of the dramas? What are some of the uh, confusions that arise between neighbors as Yotsubado uh, is going here, there, and everywhere? And so seinen's a really broad category. That's like if I said, oh, uh, literature is the word for books for adults. What does that mean? There are all kinds of books for adults. There's all kinds of comics for adults. But that's what seinen is. But then we get Jose, manga genre aimed at older women. So where shoujo, might be a little more idealistic, a little more sparkling and cotton candy with its romance. Uh, Jose is more, tends toward a little more realistic, uh, very compassionate leads. Uh, this series here, Tokyo Terror Reba Girls, I like to compare, I like to call it uh, the sex in the city of manga. You have three career women, they're dating guys left and right. They always come together at night and talk about, they compare how their dates are going and uh, they, they can text each other and summon each other and say, oh my gosh, I had this really terrible night. I got to meet up with y'all right now. And they lean on each other and they're each other's support network. Does that mean, you know, I think it's a hilarious series. So Jose, it's manga for older women. All right, guys can like it too. It's no big deal. A note about age ratings and I have some visual cues to go with this. Uh, Viz shares its age ratings here as A for all ages, T for teen, T plus or OT for older teens, and M for mature. These are pretty good rules of thumb. Uh, I want to show you, for example, Drawn in Quarterly has Shigeru Mizuki's Kitaro, and you see Manga General on a label on the back. But it's not terribly clear, except for if you read the reviews and the description, there's not a quick label to just say, okay, you can hand this to kids. Like you might have to scan through it, get a little closer to it. We have a Viz title for Splatoon from the video game series. And we do in fact see the little A on the very bottom. Okay, it's for all ages, good. You can put that in the kids section. We have Barakamon from Yen Press. And when we look on the back, we do see there's a T for teen. Okay, I can put that in my teen area. And then we have one of my favorite manga of all time, Planets, great hard sci-fi series. But if we look on the back, it kind of just says that it is manga, it is science fiction. We do get a description, but we don't get a quick little one letter rating to make it clear. So your mileage may vary from publisher to publisher. Sometimes they make it very clear who the audience is. Sometimes you gotta do a little guesswork or uh, consult with your library nerd friends. Uh, in talking about the appeal of manga, I wanna talk about some series sales numbers. Uh, the sequence will take a minute. I don't wanna take too long though. The Hunger Games series worldwide sales breaks 100 million. And now we have that prequel out. So who knows how much higher that's going to get. So that's going to be our baseline is selling 100 million copies. Attack on Titan has also broken 100 million copies. And is honestly one of those test cases where something must be in the water. Because I think of it as a mature series. But it is high concept and relies on people teaming up to fight these nightmarish giants so kids react to it 
uh, very well. Uh, sometimes when I have my anime club at the library, uh, parents will bring a 10 or 12 year old and go, oh yeah, they love manga and anime. You know, and it's like a 10 year old wearing the outfit from the cover of Attack on Titan. I'm like, why, how do you know this series? What's going on here? <laughs> Uh, so a mature title, but it has broad appeal, breaks 100 million. Twilight broke 120 million. So good job, evil manga giants, but vampires in love and werewolves in love surpasses you. But Bleach is right there to rival it. Super long shonen series. And we'll talk about series length in a minute. But Diary of a Wimpy Kid crushes all of them at 200 million. I'm sure you have kids and families who come in every day or back when people came in and will we'll again someday saying, have you got that Diary of a Wimpy Kid series? Do you have book two and book three and book four? But then you have a little, a lovable little scamp Detective Conan in the Case Closed series, 230 million copies sold. But... It also has an extremely high volume count. So it's easy to say, oh, it sold 230 million copies. Well, it never ended. So of course it's always selling new material. Well, we're no strangers to that, are we librarians? Because the Sweet Valley High series has been going on for decades and has multiple authors and multiple spinoffs, over 250 million copies sold. Okay, Naruto's right there too. And that was Kishimoto. <laughs> Uh, just threw those out, 72 volumes. And he nailed it, in my opinion. But then Naruto owes a lot of inspiration to Dragon Ball, 275 million. And is a lot of people consider it one of the gold standards in Shonen action. In a lot of ways, it is. But then Big Daddy, hardbacks crowding your shelves. James Patterson, 305 million. Devotes his entire life to ghostwriters pumping the shelves every day of the year. He can destroy all these records. So can Goosebumps, R.L. Stein, Horror for Kids, Addictive. I grew up on it. You probably grew up on it. 400 million. Scholastic Book Fair is not joking around, y'all. Neither is One Piece. At 473 million copies sold, easily the best selling manga of all time still going strong to this day. Uh, I guarantee teens who are into manga are probably gonna ask you about One Piece and you will have to explain why you, you don't immediately have all 90 plus volumes <laughs> available for checkout. But no one has beaten the king yet, Harry Potter at 500 million and counting. But you see on this list here, when people bring up manga, it's not just, oh, this is this niche thing, and you know, it's just something kids are into for a little bit. It's like, no, it was growing in, as far as America is concerned, you know, it was growing in the seventies and it was getting there in the eighties and it started blowing up in the nineties and it got big in the two thousands. And now we're in the 2010s and Britney Spears' son is uh, on Instagram with like paintings of Goku from Dragon Ball. You can look it up, it's a real thing. Anime and manga have, entered their square of pop culture and they're not going anywhere. And they're only gonna get stronger from there. Some more recent hot titles uh, to be aware of. My Hero Academia launched in 2014, already sold 26 million. Haikyuu, volleyball sports shown in manga, uh, 38 million copies, again from 2012. I have a note here about Archive of Our Own, that's a fan fiction site and some of their most popular fan fiction involves characters from this Haikyuu series, which you can take as proof when we talk about programming in a little bit, that this, again, this isn't simply they read it, it disappears, they never think about it again. A lot of fans say, I enjoyed the story, I enjoyed these characters, but I'm gonna really lock on to these characters and I wanna see a whole other story about them. I'm gonna write my story about them. Uh, the rainbow roll effect, right? With the, that whole in-universe thing she did with like, what if Harry and Draco, you know, buddied up and then that becomes a whole story. A lot of fans do that with a lot of the manga they read and Haikyuu is one of them. Uh, Demon Slayer, a recent series, launches in 2016, breaks 60 million in sales. In some months, its sales it, within a month surpass One Piece's which was blowing everyone's minds. 
uh, and the, the volume, the series has wrapped as far as those weekly magazines where the chapters come out, the series has just ended, but the collected editions are gonna continue in America uh, through 2021. So if I were collecting and I wanted to get a hot series right now, I would pick up Demon Slayer. One, because it has a definite ending and that's great. But two, it's still on everyone's mouth right now. Everyone's still talking about it and it's still gonna be popular as people who read in this collected format are gonna be begging for, wait, I gotta find out how it ends. I need to get the next volume as fast as possible. And then you have stuff that's older like Hunter x Hunter, or I think some people call it Hunter Hunter. From 1998, 78 million in sales, it keeps getting anime adaptations and that keeps it fresh in people's minds. And then they turn to the manga and they continue reading it. These, some of these series have more than one shelf life. This is also true for Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. Starting 1987, it's almost as old as I am. Breaks that 100 million. And you know, all throughout 80s, 90s, early 2000s, it was very niche series. I, I was sort of aware of it. A friend got me into it for a little bit. And then one day teens are coming up to me like, have you heard of JoJo's? And then another teen hears that and they turn their head and they're like, JoJo's! And then they like, suddenly they're sharing their DeviantArt pages with each other and they have all this fan art and they want to cosplay it. And I'm like, where, how did JoJo's, like I was a teen when I found out about JoJo's. How did it, because there's new anime adaptations and those become memes and people want to imitate it and it just takes on a life of its own. So it's not always about what's the newest best-selling thing, but it can also be about what has re-entered uh, the pop culture consciousness. Uh, I see some raised hands, Angie and Scott, are y'all getting those questions for later? Yes, and Thomas, I'll tell you, you have about 15 minutes. So it's 1.42 right now, so. Okay, do. So let's talk about fresh baked manga. Down in the teen center, that 12 to 18 space, I mentioned we have an adult general collection for graphic novels and we also have a children's one. But we have a fresh pick manga collection just for the teen center because it's a space for our 12 to 18 year olds. We have a lot of teens who get dropped off. They're told just stay in the teen space where I know you'll be okay. And so uh, some coworkers and I, we put it upon ourselves. We approached the collection development uh, team and we said, well, here's some manga that we would like to have available. Uh, the fresh pick status meaning uh, it can't be placed on hold. It just stays in the teen center. That's just the way we had to work it for our space. And we just got the first two or three volumes of each series so they could at least at least sample a lot of different series and see what they like. And so this is some of our fresh pick manga here. And all of this, I've got a giant list I'm gonna show you all at the end of this. So don't worry if I'm if you can't get your screen grab and copy down all the names just yet. And this is the rest of our current fresh pick manga. You might recognize some of these titles. But here's, here's a big takeaway. Uh, this collection was started in February 2018. So the stats I have from this collection, minus replacement copies and missing copies and things that always mess up collection sets, is that I can tell you the top 10 by circulation. And that's circulation of the series, not just the volume ones. And so what do you see? Assassination Classroom and My Hero Academia and One Punch Man, three big shonen series, people were really interested in them. But what comes right after them? And they were chasing the tail of those three. Orange, heartbreaking, quasi time travel shoujo story. A silent voice, fantastic. I, I would call it gender neutral, really in terms of who the protagonist is. A uh, story about bullying that once word got out among the teen group, a couple of teens read it and they got super into it. And they were so obsessed with it that other teens around them were like, what is this series you love so much? And then they all got addicted to it. Uh, and just has a really great message about bullying, forgiveness, trying to redeem yourself. Uh, it's not very didactic. It really gets into uh, issues of depression and self image and all this. And then Sailor Moon, a lot of people's huge gateway into anime and manga came through Sailor Moon, still big. Plenty of adults too, coming into the teen area. You guys have Sailor Moon. Uh, Oran High School Host Club, another huge gateway. Yona of the Dawn, great shoujo adventure uh, with some fantasy thrown in. Naruto still going strong. Hori Mia is a shoujo. 
And if we could pick more series and stock up the shelves right now, uh, my coworkers and I, these are series we would grab right now if we could. And a couple of these, uh, the, the strange title over on the right, I Want to Eat Your Pancreas. Uh, I promise it's a much more grounded uh, and not quite as weird uh, title as that title would suggest. It's a one volume heartbreaker of a story. Um, Our Dreams at Dusk is a fantastic uh, LGBTQ, uh, very realistic look into just, you have this uh, sort of a help group for people uh, in Japan and they don't all have the answers for each other, but they try to be friends for each other. And some of them are uh, a little confused, a little searching about their place in life and in the world. And some of them feel very confident, but they don't know how to project that confidence onto others. Saint Young Men, Buddha and Jesus take a year off and vacation on earth. It is so wholesome and so fun. And the author was scared for years and years that if it came out in America, people would come with torches and pitchforks. And the, the people that I've shown Saint Young Men who would be especially religious, and I mean, hey, I'm from South Carolina, so I can tell you about that. They thought it was the most charming thing ever. They're like, they loved all the religious references. I would immediately put in St. Young Men. Satoko and Nada, two college roommates, uh, one Muslim, one Christian, and they just sort of learn about each other, do cultural exchange, and ask each other questions about their lives. I think it's a very educational series. Now, are there limits? Yes. I'm not saying that I would stock every last manga in a children and teen area. Attack on Titan and Tokyo Ghoul are super popular. They're also very violent. It's a 12 to 18 space. I don't want someone to bring their 11 year old in saying, oh, my kid's kind of getting into manga. Oh, this Tokyo Ghoul, it's like this blue kid, let's read it. No, there are scenes of torture and dismemberment. (laughs) That can go in the adult section. It can be in the library, I'm fine with it. Some libraries put in their teen section. I don't judge them for that. I just don't think it would be great for my teen section. Series like School Judgment and Living Stone. Uh, Living Stone goes into topics surrounding suicide that I, I just, I have feelings about impressionable readers getting into that. Again, it's in the collection. I just wouldn't put it in a 12 to 18 space. School Judgment, cutesy legal proceedings in a classroom. There's some jokes of a sexual nature that I, that just make me feel really queasy because there's like minors involved and stuff. So I just, I wouldn't put that in a kid's area. So I'm not saying anything goes. I'm saying the manga that I recommend by age level, and I'll show them to you in a list in a bit, uh, I do consider what is being offered to each age group when, it, when my coworkers and I make those judgments. Plenty of LGBTQ manga out there. Uh, and I'm talking about every letter on, in the acronym when I say that, uh, whether it's our dreams at dusk, the bride was a boy, uh, my brother's husband, wandering son, Uh, And Go For It, Nakamura, and Claudine, which are both one volume uh, manga. Uh, There's just plenty of room for representation. It's not something that it used to be uh, that shonen manga would be so hyper fixated on the boys in the story. You would almost think the girls had cooties. You can't tell a girl's story in a shonen manga. That uh, girls reading would read into these intense emotional friendships that the boys had and say, and they would ship them they would consider the characters romantically involved because they're like these two care about each other so much why don't they date but now there's also plenty of lgbtq manga on the shelves in america uh and people they look for it plenty of teens come to the teen center and say i'm looking for comics and books and any other content with you know queer protagonists queer authors queer content and so are you going to be the library that turns them away or are you going to be the library that says yeah, I've got like 50 of those. Come on in. Let me show you something. Manga nonfiction. Uh, just tons of fantastic content there. I have to skip a little quickly because I don't want to run out of time too quickly. And Thomas, I just, I want to, I want to, so you do have 10 minutes, but I also want to remind everybody you're going to get these slides and Thomas has a list too, right? So yes, don't panic about all this. You're going to get a copy of the slides and Thomas, you do have 10 minutes and we've had some questions. So okay, there we go. Yeah. You're all are getting the whirlwind version of the book talking part. The manga guide to series. I have a wired article linked off to the side. Uh, Whatever you may think of the cover design. These are actually 
very accurate, very teachable guides to these different topics. And the Wired article goes into how a child and both parents uh, who are themselves quite educated, read, each read through a different manga guide to, and they got a lot out of them. They're, they're fantastic for a nonfiction collection. Even if you don't have a manga collection, at least get them for the nonfiction value. And I've reviewed a couple myself. I, I think they're lovely. If you want to include classics, if you want your Shakespeare and your Dickens and your Austin and your Bronte and all that in manga format, it does exist. Uh, some of it, manga Shakespeare likes to shake up how the stories are presented. You might get a cyberpunk version of a Shakespeare story. It might be a little more supernatural. It might take place in the future, but it uses the text of Shakespeare for everything the characters say. Manga classics, just because you're adapting to comics, you know, they necessarily, they do have to abridge a whole lot of the story content. But I think it's a great way to get your toes wet and get exposed to some some of what's considered the literary canon, but in a manga format. And you know, maybe that helps someone break down a barrier in you know, whatever exposure they want to uh, those authors. Kid-friendly manga. I would put these in the kid-friendly manga category. Cute animals, cute supernatural, Hikaru no Go. We're going to get to that in a second. Nintendo series. I showed you Splatoon, but you also have Legend of Zelda and Mario Adventures. Mario Adventures is in color. Manga in color is a, is a beautiful thing. Uh, Shugakara, about an elementary schooler who has these magic eggs that let her take on these different personalities, and she tries to help other people whose personalities are lost, and what kind of person do you want to be? Uh, Shugakara, I think, is a sleeper gateway hit. Uh, in the manga world in the U.S. Mature and horror manga. Your readers are going to grow up and they're going to want to uh, start reading things that might freak them out uh, or show them a whole lot more violence or get into a lot more complex emotions. I think a lot of these titles would qualify for that. And manga coming out soon. Manga that's not even out yet. Uh, you could look at Chobits, Maison Ikoku, and Soul Eater as exceptions. Those are reprints, but that goes back to manga as a generational phenomenon. And so when these reprints come out and the whole internet, uh, they might ignore these series, but then a bunch of older readers say, oh, they brought back Chobits. Oh my gosh, I love that series. That's going to generate a whole new wave of interest. Uh, and several of these others uh, in the bottom right, Weathering With You, huge anime movie. I'm sure a lot of people would love to jump into that. Uh, an Ascendance of a Bookworm. Girl travels back through time uh, into a poor and illiterate era, and she says, I'm going to invent librarianship. I will invent literature, and then I will invent the collecting of it, and I will be a librarian, gosh darn it. Programming. It doesn't have to be as enormous as the Toronto Comic Arts Festival, where you've got artists and panels uh, for multiple floors. There's a great Publishers Weekly article here that goes into some smaller, just li you know, small library sized cons that went to local artists, use uh, the patron base to drive interest and drive the organization and programming for a small library convention. You can also go out to a local con, in my case, Nashi Con, go out to a con and just table at it and just have something for people to pose with to say, I love this character, I love manga, I love the library. Library's got manga too. Uh, having a trivia board out or some sort of game where people can use the trivia they've picked up from reading tons of manga and then the library saying, oh, hey, you know, you love all those series? Tell us about them. A lot of conventions feature a traveling manga library. I have a link here to a story about the Carolina Manga Library. This is a photo of it in action where they just set up a bunch of temporary shelves of comics at a library convention and people just come in, they just read for free. They say, oh, I see everyone's cosplaying this character. I haven't read that series yet. Okay, well, come have a seat, spend a couple hours, get a couple volumes into it. Now you're caught up a bit. It's a huge phenomenon in conventions. People want to sit and read. That's a huge part of the fandom for anime and manga. You can cosplay arts and crafts. Uh, this I did with the help of uh, Marky Gaddis, who is a, a cosplayer all across the country. Uh, we made these little LED glasses because a lot of times in anime when you're wearing glasses, like the light hits them in just such a way that it covers up your eyes and it looks like you're about to do something really cool. 
And so we've just made little LED circuits and we modified these glasses and then we all posed with them. And I really miss a lot of our teens is what these photos is reminding me. And then just ask, ask your audience, what, what have they read? What would they love to read? What would they recommend? If I loved this, should I read that? They'll tell you, you, you will not have to pull teeth on that front. A teen came in, Vivian, as we can see, but came into our dry erase board and just decided to write down, here's everything I've read. And then made a whole another anime list underneath that. They love to brag about what they're reading. Wouldn't you love that as a librarian for young people to come in and say, everyone check out everything I've read. And then when I'm gonna make friends, I'm gonna read everything they read. They're gonna read everything I've read. That's a beautiful thing. Hey, and then of uh, course- Thomas, this is Scott, you yeah. got about four minutes. Okay, and then comics being comics, if you can get a local artist in, teach them how to make their own characters, draw their favorite characters. That's beautiful. The American Go Foundation uh, has a great program where you can get the entire Hikaru no Go manga, one set uh, for a really low price. And they also send out kits to like learn the board game that they play in the manga. Uh, and I've had success uh, putting on similar board game programs with young people at my library. And that gets back to the question of what are comics to them? Uh, not what it is to me, not what it is uh, to, to people who say manga should be one thing or the other, but the people who are coming in your door. And I know that y'all appreciate that sort of frontline attention to the people who are coming to the desk. I've got a lot of further resources here, uh, including the American Go Association link, uh, some beginning managing manga links, great graphic novels for teens through the American Library Association and YALSA. Uh, they put together a great list that includes manga. And you see there's a link here at the bottom that says all the recommendations and more I, in fact, have. Yeah, Thomas, if you could cut and paste that and put it in the chat. Um, I would love to. We have an enormous document of all the manga that I've talked about in this presentation with title, author, and how many volumes are in the series. So if you just want to just get a few short series, you can do that. If you want to invest in a giant one, you can do that. I have them separated by age group. But then, but then, I've already diced out the past five years worth of great graphic novels for teens manga selections that you also made. And I laid them all out alphabetical by title. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that everybody- I'm gonna go into the chat if I can find the button for it. Everyone, I just wanna tell you this, this thing that Thomas is about, this link that Thomas is about to post, this is an enormous amount of um, labor on his part. Uh, it's, it's gonna, it'll save you a lot of time. Um, he has, as you mentioned, it's divided out by um, age group and um, kids age. And also that everyone tells you how many, it also tells you how many volumes each one is. It's, Thomas said it's great. This is, it's an extraordinary document. Um, and in case the link gets lost, a tiny URL, I've, Iowa manga. I already bookmarked it. So, okay. and also they will get a copy of these slides. So, well, you guys, when you get the slides, the slides will be a PDF and you can click on it directly from the slides. All right, I think that's my hour. That's a, can... Thomas, that was amazing. <laughs> We ran out of time. Uh, I there was a couple of questions. Somebody asked where you know about new ones. I linked to No Flying No Tights. Do you have other? No Flying No Tights also fantastic for librarians, okay. by librarians, book reviews, mm -hmm. great resource. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and that was what came to my mind. That was um, somebody asked where you buy them from. I kind of suggested Baker and Taylor, but do you have Baker and Taylor stocks plenty? Yeah, pretty, every, pretty, a lot of book distributors. Yeah. My library think, uses Baker and Taylor, so I mean, that's what I can And I, I think I said maybe some of the rarer ones you might not, but most of them, I think, would be from any job or would probably have them, I think. I would think um, so. Yeah, and so those are some of the others. If anybody, if you have questions in the chat, um, uh, I saw a couple people had their hands raised. Um, so if, let's see, um, Cindy, Vera, and Dina, you had your hands raised. Um, if you have questions, you can ask them in the chat or if you accidentally raised your hand. Thomas, that was extraordinary. It was or so I can, good. I can throw that back up, you know, go to, yes, drop me a line, drop an email. <laughs> yes, Thomas would love to hear from you if you have specific questions. Um, 
what other follow-up do people have? Let's see, there's things coming in the chat. Thomas, if you want to check it out. Um, everybody liked it. As a follow-up, that, that, that giant Word document uh, where I have the age grouping stuff from this presentation, I've also thrown in several series that just, I couldn't fit into little two <laughs> rows of five things where I said, well, you should also get this. If you're, it's not every manga ever made. I'm sure I missed a lot of stuff. But it is a lot of stuff I would confidently recommend for those. Right. And Thomas, I love the thing about Tokyo Ghoul and Attack on Titan. Like um, we had Tokyo Ghoul in the YA section at the library I worked at in New Mexico. And then we moved it to adult because it just got too um, much. <laughs> it just got too much. So right. I think the reminder that it's okay, like you could have some things in the adult section or you could say, we're not going to have, we're, we're going to not put them in the YA room or I think that too. So. Um, it was, this is no flying, no tights. I'm going to link again. So, um, yeah. so everybody to you as a reminder, you will get a survey. You'll get a survey from, um, the CE, uh, account. It will let you have, tell you have the, you'll have the survey monkey. That's how you'll get your CE certificate at the end. And also attached to it will be Thomas's presentation. Um, and all of the links in Thomas's presentation will be clickable at that time. Um, so. Thomas, that was great. It was so great. Um, if anybody Thank you. else I was going to throw questions. in a No Flying, No Tights link. It takes you straight to the manga and right. anime. It's almost entirely manga. You can sort. You can sort by age mm -hmm. rating. You can sort if you want manga. You can sort, you know, best for a given school library, mm -hmm. K school librarians. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Please but take also advantage if, you, of it. if you're nervous about comics, No Flying, No Tights is also like, how do you start No Flying? How do you start comics at your library? No flying, yes. no tights is great for that too. So, yeah. Um, Go, yeah. Give me another hour. I'll do a general graphic yes, novel. So, and, and you kind of didn't get to talk about, um, you didn't get to talk about programming so much or anime as much. So, you guys, I would love to hear from that in the survey. If you were interested in in more follow up about this, one about comics and graphic novels, Thomas also knows a lot about graphic novels, not just manga. Graphic novels and anime clubs. I've been running yes. an anime club for the past decade, and mm -hmm. just like I keep saying, what is it to them? If, mm -hmm. if interest from teenagers dried up in anime and manga, graphic novels, all that, I'd quit talking about it. Mm -hmm. But it keeps coming back as an interest. It keeps coming back as a thing that parents and families say, this isn't our specialty. Does the library have some sort of giant nerd who can decode all this? And I'm like, okay, I, the things I do for my country, this is what I have. This is I, what I get. I will be the giant nerd. I will yes. take one. I will take one. Um, yeah, so, so, yes, Thomas, is all, you were, you've been on... You were on the Yalsa Great Graphic Novels Committee and yeah, for two years, two, yeah. two years with so. Jonathan, who's over in the chat here. <laughs> yes, yes, Jonathan, one of our Iowa librarians. And here's Thomas. Thomas, this was hey. amazing. This was so great. Um, and the resources a lot, I think. And also you did a good job really kind of explaining the history and the culture and the story of it. So I think everybody learned a lot today. Um, if you have questions that you don't feel comfortable putting in the chat or you have to run, you can email Thomas as a follow-up and you can also get in touch with me. Um, and um, I, I would also say too, one of the things Emily just said was the tips. So remember when you get the slides, that slide that he had about he had about ESL and talking about how it engages different literacies. I think that's the thing you can remember to talk about with the adults in your community and your stakeholders as well who might be hesitant about this kind of thing. So and believe me, so many kids consider it a superpower when they can read right to left comics yes. and the parents go, I don't know how they're doing that. And they think I can read in a way that these older people cannot. How mind blowing is that from a young age to be able to say that you can read something someone else can't? That's amazing. So true. So, yay, Thomas, thank you. Woo, everybody loved it. Thanks for having and, me. Um, we'll be in touch. And everybody, if you want to get in touch with me and I can provide you with more info and keep an eye on your emails for the surveys, um, which will have a link to the PDF and uh, the Google Doc. Thomas, if you want to put that one more time in the chat. Um, Absolutely. Uh, Truly an extraordinary resource. Uh, so thank you, Thomas. Maybe Yay! that'll grow into a monster and I'll just it keep updating it. It is a monster. It. <laughs> do it, do it. So many people use it. I can see right now there's already like, right now 12 people looking at it as we're speaking, so.
And if you're on yes. Twitter, you can find me at Library Tom. Yes. You can ask me a million questions, and I will probably drop what I'm doing. Thomas <laughs> and always answers. I'll, I'll, I'll message him and be like, Thomas, can you recommend five good mangas for 12 year olds? Oh, if you came to the summer library workshops, um, there were there were mangas included in my book displays, and Thomas recommended them all. They were all based <laughs> around the summer reading theme, and Thomas recommended all of them. So, okay. Thank you all.